Hey guys, welcome to our new project. Today's video, we are building the foundation of the shed. Two by eight lumber, half inch pressure treated plywood, and the camel block system. I laid out the frame here to give you an idea of the space. That's a pretty good sized room. And we can go 10 feet tall, and that is going to be amazing. So first step, of course, we gotta lay this out. Now, when I'm working on something like this, uh, I like to build my shed base like as making a deck. Okay, I want it strong enough to carry the live load and the snow load in the winter time. Being up here in Ottawa, that's always a big concern. The beautiful thing about it is the camel blocks we're using today are rated for 1,800 pounds each, right? So that's more than double the strength that I need for a structure like this. So we're going to go through our construction process one step at a time, explain a few options as we go through this, okay? So it'll help you out. And remember when you're building something, building code is different all over the place. Places like Florida, when they get high winds, everything's got to be attached into the ground. So make sure you can, you know, consult your local building office before you just go running ahead with a project. Unless you live in Ontario, then everything you see in this video is perfectly legal and legit. All right. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do, just to make my life simple, because 10 by 16 is an actual dimension, I've got a 2 by 8 by 10 foot. So I'm just taking the boards and I'm going to square them off. throw in a single screw in all four corners. There we go. Now this doesn't have to be exactly perfect. The system we're gonna to use today is really easy. We're gonna be putting a block in a location here with a one foot overhang. Same on the other end, same on the back. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna fin finish off the squaring of this so that we can use a marking paint and mark where the block is gonna get cut. Then we can remove the lumber, dig the hole, set the blocks up, and we can build this thing really quick. So I'm taking my block. Very important that you get rid of all of your organics when you're gonna be working in this scenario, okay? So get the grass, the black dirt, if it's there. And then this will actually sit pretty much flush with the finished grass. So let's make sure we make this big enough. <laughs> Here we are. Here we go. Let's just get a diagram going here, guys. Ah. So we've got a 10 by 16 de deck that we're making. That's the outside dimension. And the way we're building our deck is we're putting structural posts at each end, and then we're putting a ridge beam, okay? And then deck boards off of that, all right? These help you get the end from the beginning on this process. But this ridge beam has to be two pieces, okay? So. Same at the other end. It's two boards. They're each one and a half. That means I got three inches there, three inches here, and my joists then have to be cut to fit inside that. So the total span is 10 feet, all right? So what I need to do with all these is cut them down to nine foot six so that when we're finished, the outside dimension is not bigger than what code allows. If I just start using two by tens and framing it up, I'm gonna have the building a few inches longer than it's allowed. So. Think back from the beginning and don't do that to yourself. Because if you ever get a code officer, here's a complaint from a neighbor. That's why they show up. They got a neighbor complaint. And he comes out with a measuring tape. And if your shed is 10 foot, one inch, well, the neighbor's right. It's too big. <laughs> now, in order to do the cuts, we're going to follow a simple procedure here. Uh, we're going to flush these together. Because I hate measuring over and over and over again. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Wow, that is not exactly the same length, is it? All right, so the reason we're flushing up at one end is I can't just go and say, 
This is a 10 foot board, a measure off six inches. You always have to measure from the beginning. Pressure treated lumber, um, generally speaking, comes in varied sizes, all right? You can't, you're not gonna get exactly what you think you're getting. Let's, let's see if this is even 10 feet to begin with. Yeah, this is 10 feet and an eighth, not a big deal. But if every board has got a little variance to it and you start sticking them together on a deck, you end up with, <laughs> your deck frame is all over the place, right? So here we go, nine foot six. Mark that. Okay, square, marker line. All right. Now, for those who aren't aware, I always take a black marker and I mark on my, my table here where the blade is gonna cut. So I know exactly how to line this up. So I can put my black mark right on that other black mark and it'll be perfect every single time. I can use the square here as a, as a running guide Right? And that keeps my saw blade going straight through instead of on an angle. Woo -wee. Now, because I set them up flush, the next board is already ready, marked, ready to cut. Okay, so I can put this away now. Ah. Uh, all right. Now, I've got to cut, how many of these? 13? Oh my goodness. How are you doing over there, Matt? Uh, I think I'm just about done. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Line them all up. And then just run it right through that same hole. Do that 13 more times and we're good to go. And like any other outdoor project, guys, all your cuts, right? Get that cut and seal on there. Okay, this brush is a little bit too big. But Okay, be real generous with this stuff. It's not as good as being pressure treated, but at least it's treated, all right? And the truth of it is, all these cuts are actually going to be not really exposed to very much weather, but all right. Uh, where I, where I live, we have limestone screenings. Limestone is everywhere in the quarries. Okay, so this is like a byproduct of getting out the dirt. And it is a fabulous leveler. Right, so this is stone dust. And it packs together pretty darn good. Okay, which is why it makes such a really good structural base. Because when this stuff is wet, it actually has like a bonding element to it. Okay, it kind of becomes like a concrete block. But it's great for drainage as well. All right. So we're gonna put in enough to go about an inch, inch and a half. That's plenty. We're gonna just level it out with our feet a little bit. Okay. And then we're gonna tamp it down into something structural, nice and flat, that we can then put the camel block on. And there we go. Okay. Now, <laughs> now we've got compacted dirt, we've got compacted limestone screenings, or stone dust, if that's what you have to get, okay? It's the same kind of material that they set all of those, um, uh, what the hell are they called? The blocks for the driveways, interlock. There we go. It's the same material that they use to set interlock block, okay? And what they do is, in those processes, they just set it, they don't even pack it. And then they put all the blocks on. And then they'll do a light packer over top. We do this in reverse. We pack first, we set the block, and then the, the camel block is rated to carry 1,800 pounds each location. It's a lot of weight, 
right? Give you an idea. The entire shed that we're building is probably going to be, yeah, about 2,200 pounds. So even in the wintertime, I got more than double the strength necessary here. The versatility of this block is this. We're using the 4x4 four four post, okay? But you can also put in a 6x6 six six in this dimension if your structure requires it. Right, that's very common if you're going to be putting like a second floor deck um, that's not attached to a house. Not very common to do that, but in some situations, that's your only option. This ridge here is one and five eighths, which is basically the thickness of a two by lumber. And this ridge here is two inch, which is the same as LVL. So depending on what material your design calls for or your engineer or your architect or whatever, this solves every single problem. And what we do is we simply line this up so that the one and five eighths is going all the way across, which I didn't do yet. And you can take your lumber and that's it. All right. Now this requires your surface to be flat before you can do this. But if you're, uh, if you do a stone pad, this works really great. Okay. Remember, one of the advantages of using a product like this is you're separating your wood structure from the ground, so there's no wicking of moisture. Everything that you're doing is about building science, and so because this is a heavy-duty plastic, it breaks that moisture, it's like a moisture barrier, all right? So now the only moisture that's left is the moisture in the atmosphere, and everywhere you live, you go through seasons of wet and dry, and buildings will dry out. As long as you're not in contact with the ground, you can build anything that'll last a long, long time. So that's just a demonstration of how this block works. You'd have to have three, at least on each joist, if you want to go ground level. So then when you dig your hole, you're right at the grass level with your deck. Okay, so that is an option. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of an understanding of the flexibility of this product and the value of it, okay? So you can understand when you're making your own plans or you're on their website and they show you to use 20 blocks, there are some situations where that's actually advantageous. I like to overbuild my structure. I love to build with two by eight or two by 10, just because if I build it like it's gonna be a deck that's on the second floor of a house, and that's up to that code level, then I know my base is gonna be secure for at least 50 years. So what we're doing is we're just setting our bases so that I can get a four by four post visualize this coming out of the ground. And then my rim joists least one of them is sitting right on top of it. Preferably both, but one's plenty. All right, and that's my point tr load transfer location. All right. And this is where making the holes a little bit bigger would have been not a bad idea. Anyway, not a worry. Let's just go across the front with this. Where's our crown? <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty damn straight, eh? Okay. There we go. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we gotta make the holes a bit bigger, right? Well, you're on a post, I'm not here. Yeah, I think what's probably best for us to do is, is dig the back side of this hole out a couple more inches. Okay, and then we'll, 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 we'll redo that. While Matt's doing that, I'm gonna bring this board up front. We're gonna mark off for our floor joist package. All right, guys, so here we go. Let's just go to basic framing, okay? We're gonna go every 16 inches on center best practice is you have both rim joists in the same location when you do this. I've seen it so many times in my life. You'll have one guy over here marking from 16 and the other guy will go over there and do the same thing but from the other side and all your joists are on an angle across your deck. So 16 inch on center is this. We got a board over here. We mark 16 inches and then we put the board from that line over here. Okay? So I'm just gonna mark this. And the red squares on this tape are always the 16 on centers. They're four feet, they're a little smaller. 
everywhere else they're big. Here we go. Okay. And then once I'm done going all the way across, I'll just connect my dots. And if you want to use a square, you can. You just go like this. Okay. There we are. Ah. All right, Matt. Let's, uh, let's start by nailing this up. Just so you know, uh, when you're nailing anything, uh, building code is one simple. It's one nail for every two inches of dimensional lumber. This says it's a two by eight. Okay, so there's four nails on the surface. Or three nails and a structural screw, all right? Either way, that's the rule you follow. Otherwise, you fail inspections. Twisted. Not bad, eh? Okay, so there we are. Now we'll just uh, tape measure this sucker. Now, we got our four locations, we've got our frame, we're roughly square. Uh, let's grab two of those boards, those old fence boards. Okay. So now we got our frame set. Ah. Just tossing a little bit of leftover wood. If you only go one screw, it can still maneuver. But if you use two, you lock the corner in place. Okay. All right, now we're locked in place. We're ready for our next step. And that is to level this bad boy. Here's how you level off a deck when you don't have four or $500 laser levels. Temporary screws. You peg the corners. Kind of looking at what you think is about level. Okay, so you can eyeball this pretty easily. Okay, I'm gonna think about something like that. And once we get this started, making the minor adjustments with the level is easier, but you can't just level one end and be perfect right out of the gate. Every corner has to be up in the air, give or take where you want this thing to go, okay? Now, one screw holds 80 pounds, okay? So that's all you need to do, one in each corner. The reason you have to do this is because the point load isn't at the corner, it's here, okay? So get a, a good close reference before you start going around. And you probably have to do two runs. Yeah. Now I am off just a hair. And like we show you all the time, keep the bubble in front of you. All right. There we go. We're released. And there we go. Perfect. Here we go, buddy. So I'm probably, I don't know, two inches out. So I'm going to put this right in front of my face. Down a bit. Oh, actually a little higher, isn't it? Okay, I gotta reset that screw. Now, what we wanna do is go just a little bit higher than it should be, because once all that weight goes into this two by four, it will sink a bit. So we would take this bubble to that side of the line. Here, let me uh, switch off my... Ew, I'm carrying it, yep, okay. <laughs> oh, here we go, ready? Yeah. Okay, and... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I can bring it down a little bit. And right to the line there. Now weight will transfer. Okay. 
There we go. Now we can do this corner over here. Ah. Okay. And you're good there. All right, so the bottom of the base, we don't want to measure from the bottom. We want to measure from these ribs. That's what the four by four will sit on. And then it has drainage holes, okay? That's, this whole thing is designed to drain, so it's not setting wet. So when you're measuring, make sure you put your tape on the end of this to measure up, all right? Now for everybody who's watching and you've got um, code compliant issues with ground level decks where you need to have fasteners and your posts are in concrete, you've really got to map this out and lay it out perfect. But what you do is you can take something like this, okay? Attach your bracket with structural screws or nails Get your double rim joists in here and then attach all that as well. That'll hold your entire structure into the concrete that your posts are set in, okay? What I would recommend is get your posts and your holes, get your frame, get it squared off, and then once you've got your, all your hardware attached, then pour your concrete. All right, that'll be a lot more merciful. <laughs> all right. Now we're gonna let all the weight sit right on there. Perfect. Ah. Track that again. It should be moved into the middle of the bubble. Yeah. Wait. Whew, that gets hot. Oh, wow. Now we just gotta bring all of our cut joists, line them all up. We're gonna nail them on, and then after we nail them in, we're gonna add the floor joist hangers, after the fact. Um, the hangers are just there for good measure for longevity. We're not relying on them for our structure. We can rely on the nails just fine, but we're gonna add them anyway, just to give us a little more beef. Uh, it's, when you're working with structure, it's a great time to do overkill, right? It's one of the only places I'll do overkill is in the structure. Um, so let's just get these all fired in here. And then we're ready to sheet it. We're gonna be done this in about an hour. Guys, what we're doing is we're just gonna line up our wood where the X's are on our frame. I know we're supposed to use four fasteners, but I'm gonna use three nails, and then I'm gonna use a, a GRK uh, structural screw as the fourth fastener. What it'll do is that'll help pull everything nice and tight, helps maintain square, and eliminates the need when I go to put the joist hangers on to put a screw in every single hole in the hanger. All I gotta do is stick the hanger on and put a screw on each side and that'll help to transfer the load and take a lot of that weight off of the, the nails and their shear strength. All in all, it's all overkill. All right, what we're looking at here is two floor joists. And I'm gonna just demonstrate crown because what we wanna do is we wanna install the crown up. In an exaggerated world, it means it's like a rainbow, okay? Because then when, as weight gets put on it, it flattens out. If you go the other way and it's like a bowl, and the weight goes on it, it gets even worse. So, dimensional lumber is never a perfect surface. It's not an engineered floor joist. So you gotta try to work with the curves because you don't wanna have one up and then one down because then it's really hard to get your sheet goods installed without them screws and nails popping over time. So here's my structural screw. When it's buried, it becomes the fourth fastener of the run, and it goes about two and a half inches into the joist. What that does is that compresses the deck together, all right, to maintain its shape. These deck fasteners, the joist hangers, they have the surface mount pins and surface mount screws, and then they also have the ones on the side. And the angle is designed to actually have the screw coming in at an angle, right, through this wood like that and holding these two pieces together, okay? That's what those screws are for. 
But in my opinion, catching the hair of corner and with a screw to keep it all compressed is, is a weaker system than driving a nice five and a half inch right into the middle of the joist. Okay, there we go. So when we hang our joist, I'll just have Matt demonstrate real quick. We're just gonna hang it, tack it in place. A little tabs here just get nailed into the wood. There you go. And then he can come along later with the structural screws. Bits come in the box, okay? And these, instead of using nails, you can pull out your impact driver. This just slides right in there and you can drive a couple of screws across the top and finish all that fastening. That way, every one of these joists is sitting in a steel bracket that's screwed to the rim joist with a structural screw in each end. This is my system. I think it's far superior to anything that's designed for decks. And it's relatively quick. Ugh. There we go. These screws are the difference between a strong deck or one that's gonna fall apart on you over time. So this is a stabilization block, I call it. It's basically just um, yeah, <laughs> stupid carpentry, really. See that? The whole deck just moved over on that one. I'm driving this right into the four x four post. And then I'll drive, whoop, lost my bit. I'm gonna drive one of these into here. And then ultimately into the second rim joist when it gets there, okay? We'll leave that for now. I'm gonna do the same thing at the other end. This should have the effect of getting rid of that wobble. Yeah, it's already gone. Like, that's just awesome. All right, all right, same thing here. Now having blocks and screws on the inside of both ends of the framing, really gets rid of a lot of that wobble, guys. Okay, here we go. And we'll wait until the other rim is on before we complete that, okay? That's much better, okay. Every time we add another layer to the structure, everything tightens up and tightens up and tightens up. We'll get the double up on the rim joist first, then we'll finish off our bracing, and then we'll start the plywood. Now, same rule applies. Four nails for every joist. But instead of nailing where the joists are, we're gonna offset them so we're not hitting the other fasteners, okay? The other thing I gotta do, this one has a lot of crown, is I tack both ends. Now I gotta force this one down. All right, so what we're gonna do, create a bit of a gap so I can get a finger in, okay? And then I'll set up my screw. Uh, I need it to close about half an inch. So if the gap is half an inch and I need to close half an inch, I need to put the screw on a 45 degree angle. All right, so I'm gonna do that right here. Just making sure. Okay. Now I've made contact with the other piece of lumber at a lower point. So as I tighten it, it should warp these back bent straight. Here we go. Actually, a little lower than I need to be. Here we go. Now I'll nail the joist. Now I can remove the screw. Perfect every time. Okay, so now just a quick recap. Now I've got two pieces of two by eight lumber, both sitting on the post, nailed together every 16 inches with four nails, which effectively triples the strength of the beam, not double, okay? Which is really awesome. Now, 
I can finish driving this screw. Solid as a rock. That's awesome. Okay, we'll do the same to the other side. And now we've got the structural component of a double beam carrying all the live load and snow load from the roof in this half of the building to two point loads, all right? So all the way it'll come down, hit this transfer to this point, go down that four by four to the ground, which carries the 1800 pounds at each location. That's basic structure 101 for decks. And that's gonna be the way it works for our backyard. Remember, almost everybody has got a slope in their yard, right? Yards are designed to move water away from the building. So everybody's got a slope. So if you're gonna put in a shed this big, you're gonna to wanna to have something to level it out before you build, or you're gonna drive yourself crazy. <sighs> Personally, I like this better. It's also easier to build off of and in a future video down the road. We're gonna actually build a little deck off the front of this, create a sitting area, okay? We're gonna go put our subfloor on now. It's actually, well, it's not even a subfloor, it's the floor. We're going half inch pressure treated plywood, four by eight sheets. And the, the system here is we're installing the floor with nails. You can use a nail gun like this, it's a roofing nailer, inch and a quarter. Or you can use the screws with your impact driver, same thing. It's a shed, I'm not trying to be sexy on the inside, I'm trying to be functional. And we wanna have something that we don't get any grass or weeds growing through it in the future. We do have a wild parsnip problem in our ditch around here. And so that stuff is spreading. And I don't wanna walk in the shed one day and have wild parsnip growing up in between my floorboards. Yeah, that would suck. So <laughs> we're going with a solid surface floor. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start off incredibly flush with the backside, all right? And meeting in the middle of this joist. Uh, done. Okay, there's my row of nails. Now my job is to make sure that I'm somewhat square here, right? If I'm square, two sheets of plywood go 16 feet. I will land on the end perfectly flush. Well then, okay, so now we've got that. I'm tight there, I'm tight there, yep. and I'm flush here. Now it's square. Okay. Uh, whenever you're nailing down plywood, start on one side and then work your way across the sheet. If you go and do the other perimeter, the plywood always comes off a roll of the hump, okay? And you're gonna have to force that into play you can't use nails. <laughs> you have to use all screws. And there's gonna be a forever a fight trying to push them back off the screw. So, because sheet goods have a curve to them, you roll them out and you go from one side to the other side and it's kind of like, like rolling out some pizza dough, right? It's kind of the idea. All right, so Matt's gonna get that marked off. <sighs> and then we're gonna get this all nailed and screwed on. Oh! Nice and simple. So what we did really was we just had this whole line on the rim joist and we just pushed the deck until everything was nice and tight and flat and square. Now, we're in, now we know we're perfect. We use this to hang the fence. We're using this to hang the deck. We're gonna use this to install our shingles on the roof and we're gonna buy a special tip that you put on the end here. We can use the same tool to hang our vinyl siding and the tip creates a space where the vinyl can still slide on the nail. So, I mean, you know, I know it's a, it's a sexy tool. It costs a few bucks. But if you're gonna be having an opportunity to use the same fastener all day long, every day, this makes quick work of it. And like I said, it's just a shed. Now, we can always throw a few screws in, right? Yeah. Now, it's good construction practice to stagger your joints, which means we'll measure from here from the right side of the sheet, cut that off and put the other piece on the other side. It's still 16 feet after all. So <laughs> we don't really need to go through that, ex that extra effort, but 
It provides a little bit more stability for the lateral movement of these joints. There we go. All right. Ugh. Did it close? Yep. All right, wanna just stand there for me then? This will work. I was gonna mark it and then pull it off a bit and then cut it, but. Uh, this is still possible. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me go get my saw. When you're gonna rip up against the joist, get the guard out of the way, set the blade right up against the, the joist, slide it into position. I've got a mark, okay? And we're gonna push straight forward and try not to gouge too much of the wood out of there. Everybody? I'm obviously hitting something. Let's do that. We're gonna set the depth here at uh, five eighths <clears throat> instead of three and a half so that the saw has a chance. Nice. Now, take that, set it over there. Factory edge to factory edge, okay? So the chalk line got me close, but my blade was set really deep, so I was cutting into the joist here a little bit. And that's why I made the adjustment, so I was only taking a little bit of the wood, so at least the battery-powered saw could keep up. But best practice here is uh, snap the line, pull it loose, cut it, and then shove it back into place. Some things you learn the hard way. <laughs> Okay. Okay, now we chalk it, right? Yeah, grab a drill and a screw and just throw one in. Throw one right here for me. Just so that would uh, we keep everything, keep everything comfy and happy while we do this. I know guys, that was quick and stupid, right? And yeah, you're right. And when I'm dealing with houses, generally it's like, I like screws, right? You can take it a step further. You can even put, you know, adhesive foam on the joist before you lay your plywood. It's just a shed. And you're gonna see, the rest of the build is going to reflect that very same practical approach, low cost, but very, very low maintenance. And I think that's the kicker. Because you can have a really nice shed and spend $20,000 on it. And just in materials. Or you can do something like this. I don't even have my material cost, but I, I promise that when we're done this project, we're gonna break it all down for you, okay? Because my material order for this delivery was 1800, but I've still got all the, all, the, all the lumber for the walls and the roof sitting over there still. So that's not bad, right? All we gotta do now is stick a door on it and some siding, some shingles. Yeah, I'm looking at about 3,500 for a 10 by 16 building. That's affordable. And that makes a lot of sense, especially in today's market. Cheers to next time.